Well, good morning guys! Welcome to another day at the Off Grid. It seems to be great weather out today and uh, well today we're going to do a special episode. Today is going to be sort of a State of the Union address. There's been a lot of comments about, you know, you're spending a lot of time out here. Where's Rachel? You know, how are you guys doing? Sort of thing. Like what does Rachel think about this? All sorts of things like that. So today we're going to kind of you know, have a look into that a little bit. We're gonna see kind of like background scenes on what exactly it entails to kind of have an off-grid property and uh, managing an off-grid property sort of stuff and day-to-day -day life on, uh, on off-gridding. And uh, well, you guys will get to see a little bit what Rachel does, you know, from day to day. You know, she may not be around or in every video, but she is definitely around. She's usually, you know, hiding in the bushes, doing something you know, to keep productive or doing her own thing. She's not necessarily the most, uh, you know, camera friendly person, but uh, in today's video, we're going to uh, basically have a little, have a little look into just how everything is doing. All right, well, we should probably start over here in the, in the kitchen area, the outdoor kitchen. Rachel is, uh, how are you doing? Bright eyed and bushy tailed today? Yes, of course. <laughs> people, people are concerned that, um, that you're not around anymore. I've been spending a lot more time out here. Uh, do you have anything to, to say about that? I'm always around. You're always around. She's, she's always in the bushes somewhere doing something. Today she's actually, well, you're just the morning, the morning cleanup from the night before. Uh, she's just taking care of the dishes, kind of getting that all sorted out. Um, but yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna take a, we're gonna take a deep dive, a deep dive into, into Rachel's day-to-day -day activity on, on the off-grid. What do you what do you think about that? Are you excited about that? You look excited. <laughs> yeah, I'm thrilled. You're thrilled? I'm she, thrilled to be in the whole video. Yeah, she's, well, she's usually, you know, behind the scenes doing the, 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 the assistance. You're, you're like, you're like a PA. Do you know what a PA is? No. What's it's your PA? Production assistant. Oh. Your production assistant? Sure. Sure, yeah. She's, uh, she does all the things that I either A, can't do or don't want to do. She cooks really well. All right, uh, let's get, uh, we, got, we got a couple of to-do lists and, and uh, things to do. Rachel is going to actually show you some of the stuff that uh, she really enjoys. You really enjoy cleaning old sausage grease? No, no, I don't. No, that's, that. a, that's a pre-scrape. But you're not going to do it, so. Well, I, I do it if I have to. It's, it's just a pre-scrape. You know what it is? It's a fire starter. That's a fire starter. We're going to go put it in the fire. There you go. All right, so that's what she's gonna do. I got a couple things to do before we get this thing on the road. Frankie is with us. She's eating grass. She's kind of like a little cow. She likes to. She likes pond grass. I'm not sure why. She likes to eat pond grass. This is why I come. <laughs> Rachel in her natural habitat. Yeah. What are you gonna do now? I'm gonna feed the fish. All right. Why is this? Is this your? You enjoy fish? I do. I do. I love fish. I love to see them jumping for the food. It's uh, it's fun. Go for it. All right, ready? Yeah. Try to get in the middle. Ooh, I'm on the grass. I should have moved closer. Ooh, they're hungry. They don't look super excited this morning. Well, they look a little excited. Well, maybe when the food gets to the middle. <laughs> yeah, I probably should have took a couple steps forward. This is why I'm not on camera. Makes me nervous. <laughs> well, those fish will evolve. They'll just, uh, they'll just come grow, onto the grass <laughs> grow legs and grow get onto the grass that's how that's how that's how evolution happened is the fish decided to go get more food. more food and uh and come onto the ground frank you'll get that oh, oh. Ah, they just splashed me <laughs> look at that look how close see how close they are you can see them see they're already evolving they're already evolving to not care that i'm i'm, I'm feeding them the little the little they probably know i'm here now oh there's one you can see how clear it is. Our, our uh, these fish are actually from Linden's Fish Hatchery. They're uh, they are rainbow trout. Oh, there's one. There was a big one. I don't know if you guys can see it. And uh, yeah, we've got uh, condors aeration going. And uh, yeah, they've been doing really well. The pond has really settled down. You can kind of see some sort of uh, like organic growth on the on the clay and I believe that's a big contributor to the clarity of the water over here a bigger patch yeah you can see it's kind of growing and it's kind of establishing it's kind of solving up the banks you can see this is this is very clay like material and what's happening 
with that stuff is uh, when it rains, the water runs down here and kind of stirs that up a bit. But once there's a little bit of an ecosystem established here, we're going to have really clear water. It does help that there is a pond condition around here that kind of takes care of the, uh, the algae and whatnot. But yeah. Uh oh, that, that fish just hit the boat. That was kind of cool. You can see over here, Chris has got his, uh, his non-stinky version of his fish feeder. This is the uh, worm feeder. So what happens is the worms at nighttime oh, decide to, uh, they decide to work their way down to the bottom and they come up the bottom and then they get eaten by fish. So it's not, uh, not a spectacular thing for worms, but the fish really enjoy it. You can actually check out that video of the complete build on his channel. The wooded beardsman. Oh, look at that, that fish. You guys can't see them. I need like a, a polarized filter on this to see through the surface of the water. I can see them. Big one. Yeah, that might be. Uh, is it slowest? No, lowest. Lowest and Clark. Clark spent, and Lou Lowest. That was the names of the fish. Chris gave. So there was some people that were talking about the bird bath being too deep. Well, over here where the water comes up there's actually a nice solid ledge on the uh, on the rock which allows the birds to sit in a shallow spot and get fresh fresh water and if they want to take like a you know go in the deep end they can go over here so they can do that and or they can have a shower down there this is like the most beautiful time of year it's got the uh the fall colors and the it's not too cold. It's not too cold. It's not too hot. It's like the perfect. It's like the perfect day. It's the perfect day. I had a question for you guys. What was the question? Question for the audience. Yeah. I don't know anything about mushrooms. What type of mushrooms are growing on our log? Yeah. This is the mushroom in question. Um. What's the underside? Of this? The underside. It looks like a mushroom. Maybe a little shout out to uh, Jeremy over at One Wildcrafter. He's got, uh, he's pretty good at identifying stuff like this. I don't know what type of mushroom that is, but maybe Jeremy can identify that. It feels, feels tasty. I don't know. Uh oh, there's something, there's a maggot growing in there. Ew, there's a bug. <laughs> you don't want to taste that? Nope. It's, mm -mm. Like a, it's like a sandwich. No, I don't like it. Come on. No. Look at this, there's just a little. Ew, no. <laughs> no, I like the look of them, Thank and I'd you. like to know what they are. But th that is, is it? I don't want to eat them. Yeah. No, you I'm didn't good. know there was maggots in there. I did not know that there was maggots <laughs> in there, and uh, I find that really disgusting, actually. And go. I'd like to move away from them. All right. You don't want to talk about your your favorite little guy that you don't want me to to, to fix. This is a uh, what do you call these things? The toadstool? Maybe. Toadstool. A mushroom thing again. Giant mushroom. Looks like a. This tree is actually uh, slated to come down. Mm -mm. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's a maple tree that actually tops completely dead, and uh, Rachel has been. Uh... <laughs> what have you been doing? You've just come out. I've been growing this. You're growing this. This is this is two years. This is two years. You've been growing this thing. What are you going to do with it? I'm going to once the tree decides to. F oh, there's another one growing. Oh, there's multiple. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of them. That's perfect. Um, I will dry it. Uh huh and then paint on it and that's what my grandmother used to do when there's I like was small there's like smoke coming off the bottom of it that's just mm -hmm. making new babies that's spores yeah ah, <coughs> i'm eating the mushroom spore <laughs> it's because i touched it don't touch it so you're gonna grow how big are you like what i don't are, know it's we'll gonna see rot how big. no it's not it's perfectly healthy you don't think so no all right well you've been saying that for two years it's true it's been like it's wintered and stuff it just keeps growing it's been hit by children playing out here mm -hmm. and it's with Stan Frankie running into it it's tough it's gonna grow until it decides it can't grow anymore all right well the top of this tree is gonna fall off um, no it's kind of like we're, we're underneath it and uh, yeah so. perfectly safe okay well all right we're just gonna continue monitoring this giant uh, fun guy there's a fun guy and uh, we're going to see uh, how, how how big we can get it yeah, and Rachel says she's gonna paint it I, this it has is to new. dry first. It has to dry. Well, I've told you. It's still smoking. Well, you touched I it. Gotta, yeah, I didn't touch it. You did. All right, well, the, the thing's the size, of, uh, the size of a large pizza. Yeah, it's a falling hazard, and we should probably take it down at some point.
but you, what if we just cut it off above the fungi? It's destined. It's destined for the fire. All right, let's. Uh, we're gonna collect some. Uh, we're gonna collect the eggs, and we've got some other stuff we gotta collect. Rachel, what did you do? Oh, we needed barn cats. <laughs> so I got two. Do you think it's a good idea having cats in a chicken coop? I think so. You think We're so? not having baby chickens. The big chickens can take care of themselves. You think so? Do you think the big chicken will... So what's these these two guys? What uh, What's their names? Lena has named them. This one here is Constellation. Okay. And this one is Cosmo. Cosmo and Constellation. Yes. I want to call one Stella, but I can't because it's a boy. They're both boys. Can I have a boy named Stella? Mm, no, just like the boy named Sue. We got a girl named Frankie. Well, no, Lena's already picked their names. Okay, I'm going to call it Stella. I don't know which one's which anyway. <laughs> How can you not tell? I don't know, I'm allergic to them. <laughs> this, is a, this is a Rachel domain now. This is, this is her cat house. Yes. Is it, isn't that like slang for something, running a cat house? I don't know. I think it is. Oh, look at that. Look at the kitty. Is yeah. the kitty scared of this thing? I don't know. Are you Stella? Hey. Hi. That's Constellation. Hi, Constellation. Is that interesting over there? And this one is Cosmo. Hi, Cosmo. They're only 12 weeks. 12 weeks. And their official title is uh, Mouser. This is the official title because uh, we got a little bit of a mouse problem. So we're going to get, we're having cats. That was my thoughts on this. My theory on this is if we have a couple of barn cats that uh, can help with our mouse population, that'll, uh, that'll work out well. Mm -hmm. Can you hear them? They're purring. They're purring. Cosmo has already caught and killed a fly. Ooh. But we're here for eggs, not for kittens. For lunch. Kittens? But kittens, people love kittens. Not that Frankie would attack these guys, but... Uh... All right, so a little update on the chicken coop uh, build. Everything's been doing actually quite well. It's nice and toasty in here. Um, one of the comments that I, I really liked was that I should uh, attach a string to my deadbolt or otherwise I'm going to lose it in the straw. That is a uh, actual great one and I'm going to do that. I haven't done it yet. Uh, I haven't lost it yet, but I can always make more. But uh, yeah, this guy needs a string. The other comment was the buildup of uh, ammonia from chicken poop. Well, the idea behind this thing is that uh, it gets cleaned out on the regular and um, it is well ventilated. So it's not really gonna build up any kind of ammonia. And uh, a lot of the times, uh, as long as you keep their bedding dry, the uh, chicken poop doesn't stink. I don't know if you guys know that. It's wet chicken poop stinks really bad. So as long as your bedding stays dry, you don't really have a problem with smelling. And one thing that I actually noticed when I watched the video myself was that they, they didn't, I don't know if they really touched upon, this bottom section actually comes out. So you, when you want to clean it, you just actually pull the whole thing out of the, uh, of the coop. So when it gets really thick and bad, you just pull it out and clean it out, no problem here. Um, although Rachel and Lena are going to be coming out on the daily just because they want to snuggle their, their kitty cats and whatnot and uh, and they got to clean their, their kitty litter anyways. This is uh, this is no longer my domain. I am I can't touch the cats. I am allergic to cats. That's the one thing I'm officially allergic to. I can eat sawdust but I cannot touch a cat. Look at you. <laughs> I'm just gonna stay here all day. And collect their eggs. We, uh, we also had a comment on how we didn't actually show collecting the eggs. So uh, let's, let's do that. We got our egg curtain here. We got, uh, what do we got, three? Holy moly, you haven't collected for a couple days. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so you can see our eggs are uh, okay. they're clean. And uh, if you want to know a fun fact, the way to tell the color of a chicken's egg before they lay them is the color of their ears. So if they have white ears, they lay white eggs. And if they have brown ears, they wear, they lay brown eggs. And uh, yeah, so these guys have, like if you look really, 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 really closely, these are the little silky chickens. That was that little black fuzzy chicken. That's kind of like a decorative version of uh, a chicken, a decorative chicken. The little silkies are little tiny, they look tiny little eggs and uh, the uh, Rhode Island Reds lay those brown ones. 
but you can have a brown chicken and lay white eggs. Is that correct? As long as they have white ears? As long as they have white ears. As long as they have white ears. I'm gonna put the cat toy back. Cat toy. Cat toy. All right, we got our, we're gonna lunch. Rachel's gonna make our, our, our official egg sandwich. She is the best at making the egg sandwiches. That's why I picked her. Uh, but yeah, everything's been working out really well in here. Uh, nice and warm, nice and toasty. Successful project. How are you, how are you sunflowers doing? I'm pretty sure they were successful this year. Yeah, they're like 12 feet tall. It's one of the only years that we actually got them to grow. Well, they are growing on uh, two-year-old pig poo. Oh, that does help. It does help a lot of pig poo. So what's the plan with these? Um, we're going to dry a few and roast them and try them. But we're going to leave most of them up for the bird, which they've already started to notice them. There was like a flock of blue jays here the other day. Yeah. The seeds look pretty good though. You just rub this part of the flower off and you can see the lots of hundreds of seeds underneath. Are they supposed to dry? You have to dry them. Usually you can break them from the stem and it'll, they'll dry quicker. I heard that what, what they do is they use like a machete and they cut the head off and then they make a sharp point and then they stick the head on the thing and then it dries in the sun. Yeah. We probably won't do that. Come on. <laughs> we'll probably cut them off and dry them on your driveway over there where the sun is to get them warm. But they're already like they're turning black. They're starting to dry. Good. Yeah, they look great. We're doing very well. We had our potatoes. We dug those up though. Mm. Our garden this year did wonderful. We should gather some carrots for our lunch. So every year what we do is uh, on these uh, gardens is this is our compost bin and uh, this is all like bonus stuff. This is actually a melon that grew. There were bigger melons we actually, I think it was a honeydew. Cantaloupe, Rachel's saying cantaloupe in the background and uh, it didn't taste very good. And then I got dill growing and uh, it appears there's some peppers growing and uh, I don't know what the heck that is. That looks like a raspberry bush of some kind. But uh, yeah, so this will just get tilled under and uh, it'll get planted with something the tomatoes grew over there so yeah this is our the compost bin which is actually quite pretty good you see the see the, the, the dews so yeah that's 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 bonus that's bonus and then uh we've got uh over here this was what was in here why is there a tomato growing in here <laughs> that's popped up oh pumpkins this is our way oh, yeah, out pumpkins uh they Grew a little early and then they decided to rot. But you can still see it. There's one here all the way over here. So we're just gonna let that guy, it's, it's orange. It's oranging, but they've been successful. There's a compost heap. Mm, delicious. There's a rotten smell vision So that's the compost heap. And uh, yeah, we just let everything rot kind of there. And uh, there is uh, the pumpkin. Something's growing right through it. That's kind of neat. Um, yeah, second crop of beets growing in this one, pretty good. These are forever onions. They will go and mature and drop these bulbs and they spread on their own and they're always green onions. So they're really helpful and they sustain and I've given many of them away to other people to grow in their gardens. They grow anywhere and all the time. They just keep spreading. They're perfect for planter gardening. What's that, Rachel? These are ever-bearing strawberry plants. This time of year, you do have to watch out for the wasps and bees, so we don't let Lena eat them anymore um, because she's not that careful to check, but they're super sweet. They come before June, before all the rest of the strawberries are ready, and they last all summer, well into the fall. We are well into October and we still have uh, bright red strawberries. You can see them all in there. So, like what Rachel was saying, this is kind of, this is neat because usually strawberries like peak in the end of June and then you don't have anything, but these ones are still going strong. This is my experiment. This is the uh, raspberry bushes that I got from in the city and I transplanted them uh, and they, uh, well, they didn't do very well. They didn't actually fruit. So I'm not sure what's going on with that, but hopefully next year they will, uh, they will start to have some raspberries on them. But the uh, pepper plants 
are doing really, really well. I think Rachel's the only one that eats these things. These are jalapeno, jalapeno peppers. Look at them all. See this one down here? Which, is that one? It's turning red. Ooh, that was a red, a red pepper. Well, I'm wanting them to turn so I can make oh. chipotle sauce. Chipotle, is that a tomato? It looks like a tomato. Mm. That's a red pepper. That's a red pepper. It seems soft. Yeah. But look at them all. So they're, yeah, so. These are just green peppers on the side. The peppers did really well. You can see that one down there. And there. It's red. Arapino. These tomatoes were supposed to be Roma tomatoes and they were mislabeled or mispackaged or something like that. They turned into, uh, I don't know what kind of tomato that is. What kind of tomato is that? I think it's a grape tomato. A grape tomato? That one's something else's food. But yeah, they didn't turn out very well. We didn't want those. These are purple beans. They're the same as green beans, but they're purple. We're drying them out, save the seed. Drying them out, yeah. We're getting for next year's crop. Dry them out, save the seed, and then we can replant them next year. But they were actually really, really delicious. Look at that. Look at that bean. We're very proud of that bean, Rachel. That's your favorite bean? Yes. Can't boil these beans. They'll lose their color. If you steam them, they stay purple. And what's the color for? Nothing? Nothing. They're pretty. Okay. And the great thing about purple beans is they're a novelty and your kid eats them because they're purple. And they're the same as green. They're just purple. So you have a novelty bean to get your kids to eat them. You just be like, hey, eat this purple bean. It's fun. It's like a Barney bean. Call it a Barney bean. It's the same color as Barney. Everybody remember Barney? All right. So this is my favorite planter. This is the, uh, this is the carrot. This is the carrot bin. And uh, we've been picking, we've been picking, you're going to pull it out. Let's see. This is always a surprise to see what the length of the carrots. Come on. Oh, uh -oh you broke it off. <laughs> oh, 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 look at that. That's a perfect good carrot. Uh, and then the one beside it. Not oh, that's so a good. Terrible one. Reject. That, that one's one. a yellow carrot. I don't think that one's good either. Why? Because it's yellow? I think it's fine. You eat that one. Okay. That was a stumpy carrot. What beside it? I have, I have promising promise, promise on that one. Oh, there we go. We've got two good carrots. We have apple trees all over the property. This one uh, didn't fare so well, but the apples are a uh, good size. This one actually got too heavy and the top actually snapped off. So this one's going to get a heavy prune once, uh, once winter sets in. It's going to get cut back significantly. But yeah, this makes it really convenient to pick apples because all the top apples are now at the bottom. You can see. They're ready to fall off. We got more apples than we could possibly eat. What's cool about these apples is it actually brings the wildlife closer to us and uh, the deer come and eat the apples. There's another one, it's hard to see because we're so far away, but they're like, you know, 50 or 30 feet tall apple trees. And those got fair size apples on them. You can't really tell, but you can kind of see how many apples there are. Rachel also wants to show off her pear tree. You see it? There are two pear trees actually. They look pretty sad, Rachel. <laughs> They're old. They've been overgrown by other trees. We're slowly cutting the fours back a little bit so they can have some more sun. They had a good yield of fruit this year. We've eaten 90% of the fruit that has been grown on this tree. And then some of it, of course, went to wildlife. They're always fun to pick with the kids though. What if I just stare at you long enough? Will you just keep talking? I will, because it makes me uncomfortable. So you don't like awkward sciences? No. Okay, let's see. Maybe you can look at the tree. This is why I'm not in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go make lunch. I don't know what it is about having the tongs, but you got to do the test click whenever you pick them up just to ensure that they still got the clickety clickety clackety. We ended up picking up this set from uh, Cabela's Bass Pro. We went on a kind of a shopping spree and got a bunch of, uh, we got a bunch of stuff for our outdoor kitchen. You got your tong or your flipper, your flipper, like, see the sheet of flipper? You can pick it up with the, there, here's your flipper back. The, uh, yeah, got to do the test click. I wonder why that is. Why, why do you got to do the test click? Anyways, these are pretty nice. You got a nice wide, you can grab the biggest burger ever. Uh, oh, 
Just waiting for our eggs to cook low and slow on the cast iron. We also got some flack. I also got some flack using a uh, plastic flipper on a cast iron. Apparently that's a no-no. I don't know. I'm not a very much of a cook. Oh, Rachel's got the... Oh, perfect. You're going to leave the egg yolk intact, aren't you? I'm going to try. You're going to try? She's going to try leaving the egg yolk. I got flack for that too. You got broke, broke the yolk. I, uh, I'm not, you know, that picky when it comes to food. Even the silky egg flipped. She flicked the silky egg, which is, it looks identical to the regular sized um, chicken egg. It's just small. It's kind of like a, an ostrich egg or just giant eggs. They're just, they look exactly the same. Who knew? I've never had the opportunity to uh, try garden fresh carrots, like picked immediately. They're super sweet, almost like, what was I saying? Sweeter than a, what were those? The cantaloupe we grew. That's uh, right, it was way <laughs> sweeter than the cantaloupe we grew. I don't know if that's because it was like a compost cantaloupe or if it was just because the carrots are that sweet. Hey Frankie. Hey, hey Frankie. You know, no carrot. No carrot? There you go. What are you gonna do with a carrot? You're just gonna eat it because you're on camera. No, you're not gonna eat that. Talk about the state of the pond. So the pond, as you guys know, uh, started off a couple of years ago at this point, and uh, it's evolved over the years. Lots and lots of backbreaking effort has gone into making that pond the way it is now. It is very, it's very picturesque, it's very clear, it's it's settled down, it's got like a rock bottom now. It's well it's well established, I think. Like going forward, I think over the next couple of years it's going to what's it gonna it's gonna grow. It's gonna grow its own little ecosystem and uh, and actually be better. Even better for fish now that we got the water clarity pretty much I think tuned in. Rachel's just over there making coffee. I figure I can tell you guys about upcoming events. Not really events, but builds. I've got quite a few things on the go, and uh, it's because it's easier to just talk about it than it is to kind of post a like a text post. This is this is just water. I've just been drinking water out of my cup. But uh, anyways, we've got some really good plans coming up. Uh, a couple of builds that uh, that I should probably tell you guys about. Uh, one is uh, there's gonna be a waterfall here at, at some point that we're uh, that we're gonna be building I'm just sort of collecting uh, The rocks for that there's a there's a lot of rock that goes involves is involved with building a, uh, a waterfall so that's uh, That's an upcoming build. I also have been working um, Over the summer. I've been working on a project like what I haven't uh, I haven't really shown anybody yet, but it's taken a long time and uh, it's a really special project and it's uh, involves it's got circles and bended wood and and uh, and maybe a turret and maybe like a castle and stuff so it's uh, it's coming up in the in the very near future um i've got this is pretty exciting for me so i've been i've been researching like rocks and gravel in uh and stuff because i'm on a rock tangent lately so i've been trying to make myself like a rock cutter out of an old uh not even an old actually a princess auto 14 inch diamond wheel and I'm trying to make a, uh, a rock cutter kind of like a, an old buck saw but it's kind of like you push the rock through the the 14 inch diamond blade and uh, it, it cuts the rock into slices so I'm trying to make my own slices of rock and then I went on a tangent I'm like well if I got rock why don't I make gravel because I always need gravel for paths and driveways and stuff so um, I went on uh, I went on the internet and uh, and I bought I've got it on order right now they're building it right now and uh, it's a rock crusher. So what it does is it takes like 20 to 30 centimeter inch diameter rocks and it crushes it into gravel. So I'm pretty excited. Looking forward to getting that thing before the snow flies hopefully. And, uh, and it's, like a, it's got like a diesel engine on it and you put the rocks in it and it crunches them up and it spits out gravel. Like I think 10 to 40 millimeters in, in size once it's all crushed up, which is going to be very cool, probably very loud. Although it's gonna crush things, everybody likes that. You know, the older I get, the more I appreciate a good gravel base. And uh, yeah, I think just going forward, I think it's got like a midlife sort of crisis thing. People buy Ferraris, I buy rock crushers. 
yeah, that'll be kind of neat. So that's coming up, and we've got some other uh, pretty exciting builds to come up. You guys have to just pretty much stay tuned on uh, on that. And uh, yeah, so far so good. I think it's coffee time after this. Look how coffee it looks. <laughs> Rachel, you must grow. Mm. Why you there? There you go. It's the afternoon coffee. Well, it's not. It's actually lunch coffee because it's going to be afternoon coffee later. Does anybody else notice that uh, the shorter the days go, the longer, the shorter the daylight hours, the more you need coffee? Is that what that was supposed to be? The older I get, the tireder I are. I, I can't. I, I am. I. It's an English lesson. <laughs> oh, how is it? Once you get past that initial greedy taste, <laughs> it's because we're using a fine ground in a in a in a in a. Did you just touch my bum? I did. Yeah. You said to get close. I'm close. It, I know. I'm barely in the shot. There we go. You, you that's just, that's just the way you like it, right? It's exactly the way I that's like right. it. You guys asked for this, so I, I really want to know. You guys got to give Rachel some words of encouragement in the comments because she does read the comments. She I just do. she uh, she she hides in the comments and and she reads them. She, have you ever commented? Mm, no, I don't think so. I've <laughs> given like thumbs up. Oh, so you're just the th you're like a mystery thumbs up. Yeah. You like some comments. Yeah, so she she reads the comments from her own from her own account. Um, she's some people thought you were moderator. I'm mm -hmm. I'm the moderator. What's Frankie doing? Oh, okay. Stretching. Yeah. So yeah. So if you guys got to give Rachel some words of encouragement to uh, if, like, because if you guys don't, she won't come back, right? <laughs> I might not come back anyway. That's right. She might not come back anyways. But you you know what? You guys can. If you guys have been sitting on the fence whether or not to uh, to comment or something, now is your time to come out of the woodwork and be like, yes, Rachel, we, 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 we're we tired of hearing Kevin talk. Please talk more. <laughs> please. Please talk more. Because, Kevin, we just... I'm not good at rambling like you are. I just... It's a practice. It's, 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 it's a learned art of rambling. Mm -hmm. I learned it from my brother. <laughs> I'm not good at it. Because I'm, I'm thinking of, actually, you know what I'm thinking of right now? No, actually, what I'm thinking of right now is actually my, my build. Actually, I, uh, I milled up a lot of uh, poplar or aspen uh, shake because I'm uh, building the roof. So that's what my brain's doing right now. It's thinking coffee. It's thinking, mmm, coffee. It's thinking, mmm, roof. How are we going to do that? And then it's like, mmm, um, squirrel. And then it's like, yeah, what's the next step? What's the, what's, yeah. It's because you're a builder. And that's why you have building thoughts in I'm a, your head. I'm a forever... What are you thinking of? I'm thinking of all of the tasks that I need to do <laughs> that um, that's don't right. always just have me standing here drinking coffee with you. That's right. Well, so um, you guys may or may not know, um, living off-grid, living rurally, living out of a city is sort of life in hard mode. And I don't know if everybody really appreciates that very much like if you're in the city it's life in easy mode and uh, if you've ever get the opportunity easier you, mode yes easier mode if you want to try life in hard mode move to the country move to off grid it is life in hard mode it is much more difficult winters are more wintry um summers are more summery how do i what do you mean by that like like pollen and pollen, pollen and dust and and and, and smells there's lots of smells and yeah, and, and then winter is like, yeah, power goes out, you don't got city water, so you're like, you're either A, trying to figure out how to get yourself water, because when the power goes out in the city, generally you still have water. Uh, that's a big, uh, a big thing for thing. In the winter you have to travel for fresh food and fruit and vegetables, especially when you have a small youngin that's around. Yes, that's true. It's there's a lot more uh, like treachery, treachery with winter driving in, in uh, especially in Canada. Um, so it's good to have uh, you know a good set of winter tires or all wheel drive or four wheel drive or something like that sort of thing. So living living you know self sufficient. I don't think or self reliant. I don't think it exists anymore just because of the um, infrastructure that's been in place and the kind of segregation of 
wild animals and stuff like that. So you can do it. It's just life in hard mode. Really, really hard mode. So everybody that does it, and uh, there's lots of channels out there that are really good at doing off-grid stuff and showing the lifestyle and stuff like that. Um, you know, they're doing life in hard mode, and you guys should go out and, you know, pat those guys on the back. Cause that's, that's a lot of work. And, and we, my channel, pretty much shows the building aspect of it, because I find doing videos like this difficult, very difficult. There, it's It's... The lifestyle's there, but it's hard to capture the, you know, the magic of it. So we're just going to have coffee. Well, it wouldn't also be so delayed. Mm. You wouldn't have sat for 20 minutes and chatted with me. It would be, let's eat lunch and we would get cleaning and we get to the next task. That's right. This it's... is more of a slowed down version so we can actually capture it. That's right. It's relaxing. There's somebody out there counting how many times I try to put it up to my face and don't take a sip. <laughs> I, I laugh. Is yours that bad? Mine's not terrible. No, mine's I got good. Used to it. No, I, uh, I, no, there was a, there was a comment on, on one of the videos and I laughed and laughed and laughed. I, I, and it was like, uh, when I was talking on the porch and I put the cup up to my, and I wouldn't take a sip and I'd put it back down and counted. <laughs> I didn't consciously actually do that. And, and now I'm I'm subconsciously doing consciously no I'm not I'm not, I'm still not <laughs> I'm not doing it on purpose it's just the way the way it is I guess. you talk too much you ramble well I'll take a pause while Kevin takes a drink All right, hang on it's the quiet everybody tunes away when you got quiet okay hang on <laughs> just give me a moment please one moment please okay you gotta chop wood. I swing the axe and hit the wood. Yes. We're not making a fail video. We're going to make a uh, chopping. So do you, know what to, do you know what to do? Show me your stance. Show me your stance. Show them the stance. I don't know this dance. No, wrong. I use a hatchet. Wrong. Okay. Well, what's right then? Try, try again. I just, I just did. Wrong. What's the difference? What do you want? Well, that's close. You can stand over here. Why over there? Right over here. Okay. And no. That seems further away. Okay, so what you want to do is put your legs apart because if you miss, you don't want to hit yourself in the leg. Mm -hmm. So you want to be like, so you're swinging and you're swinging over top of your head like this. Hmm. You don't want not over the side, you'll hurt yourself because you're going to be like, you want to be like right over the top. And okay. that's, and if you overswing, if you overswing, you'll break the axe head off and you'll, you'll say hello to the viewers at home. Oh, see, see that? Let's look close. See, that was close, close to an overstrike. You could have just tested it first. That was. That was your test. <laughs> Did you? Uh, so you want to understrike more than overstrike, because if you overstrike, you hit this I'm part. I'm more and, worried and about break. hurting my leg. Okay, well, it's not. Uh... Oh, there we go. Come on. What are you gonna do there? I don't know. Nothing. You're just gonna. What, now what? W wedge it in there. Okay. Uh oh. What? Like it. Okay. Now what? We're freezing this winter. Okay, keep going. <laughs> wow. Come on. Why do you want me to do this? There. You, oh, almost. Now what? Well, you gotta. Here, let me let me unstick it for you. How many times do I gotta hit it? I don't know until it splits. <laughs> You're getting good. Oh, there, there you go. There we go. Woo <laughs> All right, well, let's put it again. <sighs> this should be easier. Why? Because it's, it's, it's already split once. Ooh. Oh no! <laughs> what happened? I don't know. I got nervous at the end. <laughs> and then... You gotta fall through. Okay. Hang on. Go. Oh! You gonna... Does that work ever? No, so what but you I do, would like watch, it to. Watch. No, no. Look at it. See, you can go advance. You can go like this. Turn it around and. Oh. Like that. I almost took out the camera. But... I don't think. I don't know. See this, this, the weight of the axe almost splits this wood. Does it keep splitting? If you'd like. You know what's great? You, know, you have to go, I want a fire, so you could split it up. That's what we're fire. doing, that's, that's the method to the madness. We're gonna have our, our dessert. Our dessert, but we gotta work first. You know what you gotta do is you gotta get Don over here and you gotta start splitting, and Don will, um, he'll just start splitting. He'll just, take over. You just keep splitting, it's insane. 
He's part lumberjack. Hey, Frank. Okay, go over here. Oh, he ah. made it. Ah. <laughs> Where's your wood? Hey. You help. Here, Frankie. <laughs> Here you go. Bring that to the fire pit. Here. Can you take it? Here. What you making now? Um, s'mores. Nice. S'mores on a on a Oreo. Best kind of Oreos. Oh. The birthday cake flavored ones. Birthday cake ones are delicious. We're gonna try them anyway. Ooh, popped. We don't have very much coal yet. It's kind of it's gonna be tricky. Well, you just got to go low and slow, even though there's a raging inferno. <laughs> On the, oh, that's uh... Good. <laughs> All right, try again. <laughs> well, I don't want to waste it. When originally, uh, when we built the fire pit, uh, the B-roll that Chris had shot showed it all smoky, and uh, that was because the fire wasn't established. The, um, the air holes that are underneath this thing, if I got it up about this far off the ground, so it's actually pulling in a, a decent amount of air. So we're not getting any, uh, we're not getting any smoke or very little smoke. The wood conditions aren't ideal either. This isn't the driest stuff. We just split it, and we're we're going good, right? Mm -hmm. Rachel's just cooking the old marshmallow in the background. You gonna light this one on fire too? Probably. <laughs> That's okay. I think I, I I'm okay with with that too. We'll just open open the cookie. I don't think I want. That's too much cookie. Yeah. Open the cookie, add the marshmallow to the... Like this. Yeah. Open the Oreo. Open the Oreo and then add the marshmallow to the middle. And then we've got uh, birthday cake, marshmallow, Oreo. How can it be gross? It's an <laughs> it's a birthday cake Oreo between with a marshmallow on it. Oh. It's pretty good. Is it too much? I haven't got to the Gordo part yet. Oh. You're just trying to rush me so I get it all over my face. I know. I never look at the camera. I always look at my husband. See, that's how much I love him. <laughs> We're going to see how good Rachel is at catching a fish. Expert angler she is. We are going to uh, set her up with a, uh, a worm. I found a worm underneath a rock because apparently Chris is taking all the worms. Probably for his worm feeder. It's been a while since I've threaded a worm on a hook. Lively worm. Okay, you can go, you can just dip, dip in the, at the end of the dock. You don't even have to cast. I haven't been on the dock. Yet. No? No. How do you feel? I'm nervous. Actually. Nervous? Yeah. Well, it's a floating dock, it just floats. No, no, you're fine. Uh-huh. Why is it so funny? Stand in the middle, right? Right about. Keep going. Sure-footed as a mountain goat. <laughs> do you want me to come on too? No, I definitely do not. Why? Come on. <laughs> I'm good. Look, I'm fishing. It's in the water. Fishing? You see it in there? Yeah. Oh, God. You're moving the dock. That's fine. Ah! Maybe we, you can see the fish? I don't know. No, I can't see any fish. Maybe you got to cast a little bit. No. We haven't given it any time. Catch one? Come get it off. How'd you get a fish? Bring it up. Uh -oh. <laughs> we'll leave him in the water for a second. Oh, you got it. 
This book's perfect. Where is he? Oh, he got off. Perfect. Oh. That's all we needed. You caught a fish. I did. It was big. Did you see it? It was a monster fish. You can lift hook them and everything, which is perfect. It was like that big. Or that big. You didn't even get him up? Well, I I purposely bent the barb down so we don't we didn't like get the the hook stuck. Oh. You, see? There you go. Caught a fish. How was that? It was exciting. Was that exciting? Well, I thought it was gonna take longer to catch a fish actually, so I was going on the other side, but <laughs> that worked out really well. Like it's not trying to catch it with, with just that on there. There's like ever so light little piece of worm on there. Oh, oh, oh! I can see it. I can't see anything. I can just feel it in the pool. Over here. Big one. Yep. Oh. 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 <laughs> oh, that was a huge one. Hang on. Feeling it to the end of the dock. Try it. I should have ran and grabbed the net. I'm not a fisherman. <laughs> all right, it worked well. All right, I'm all done. Will it be okay with the hook in it? Oh, yeah. They're biting now. Give them my sprinkled some more food over there. All right, well, the fish are biting. Did you do that fun? It was exciting. I caught two big fish. Yes. And uh, two got away. Two got away. We didn't really want them anyway. No, we were catch and release anyway. So like we were using a barbless hook, so that's why they kept flopping off the line. So, meh. Yeah. I'd rather just feed them the pellets though and watch them jump. Yeah. Well, they're jumping now. They like to they like to feed in the in the shadow. So that's that's what they they don't like to go in the sun. But although they were biting in the sun, they're very more they're much more active now that the water's cooled down. The nights are getting cooler, and the fish they're still like how many think are in there? I have no idea. I'm pretty sure I caught the same one twice. I, but they all look the same. It's not like you're naming them. I don't know. It looks like there's. I would if I could. If I was counting them, I'd probably say there's like at least at least there's over 60 in there because I think we we had four die, um, but that's really good considering we put like 110 in, and uh, Chris has taken probably a dozen or so out. So there's still a whole lot of fish to be uh, had to be had. A couple people come over as friends. Yeah, that's fishing. true. We had, we had a couple people. So. Uh, the friends. What what do you think about uh, renting this out as like a uh, Airbnb? To people we know. I don't know. Maybe like y you have to have a referral or something from the people we know. Like application process. Strict interview. That's right. We can. Like, <laughs> you gotta write a five hundred word essay on why you want to stay here <laughs> and pay. Uh, <laughs> No, I, I don't know. I, I yeah, people have people have talked about like why don't you rent it out as an Airbnb? Well, you know what? I I I, I don't think I want to go there yet. There's still lots I want to do, and and that's because the last we're thing. We're here. Yeah, we're here. Why would we want other people here with us? Yeah, but like, even if I they were here, like that's the last thing somebody wants to do on their little Airbnb vacation is listen to me work. <laughs> the drilling and the cutting. The drilling, the sawing, machinery. the sawmilling, the machinery, yeah. <laughs> relaxing. Oh, it's so relaxing in the forest. You know what? It's, it is relaxing in the forest when they're when you're not working. So, I don't know. Maybe in the future we're not going to rule it out. You guys will have to just keep watching, see how this, this thing evolves and progresses and stuff. We've gone a lot of uh, progress so far. We're at, we're at year three. Yeah, this is year three. Did you guys know that? That's that's pretty insane. We started uh, pretty much June of 2020, so we're at uh, over three years now. And uh, yeah, we've gone quite a bit. I still got lots of lots of projects in mind. Rachel is uh, this is your first. It's taken you three years to kind of say, <laughs> okay, I'll be on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Longer than a moment. Longer than a moment. How'd you like it? 
Is it okay? It's fine. It's not what I enjoy doing. I I like my job as a nurse. Yes. And uh, well, you can. It's kind of like taking care of people. You're you're keeping them happy, <laughs> entertaining them. That's not what a nurse is for. <laughs> I don't know what you do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, because I don't make him come to the hospital. I and have been work to, with me. I was at the hospital. You wouldn't let me. Well, I, you I were be, there when Lena was born. That's right. I was there. Anyways, um, hmm. got any parting words? Got any parting words of wisdom? Mm -hmm. Get outside. Get outside. You got you enjoy this weather. Like uh, this is like winter's coming. Winter's always coming. And, but it's uh, October. This now. is like the the best time. I this is the most my favorite time of year is uh, is October and uh, the fall weather. I I like collecting firewood. So this is the best time to collect firewood. It's kind of when all the leaves die back and you can see what you're cutting. You're not fighting stuff. What do you, what do you like most about fall weather? Mm, the leaf colors. The leaves. Yeah. The full fo foliage. And that like foliage? crisp air in the morning. Oh, the crisp morning air. Yeah. What about pumpkin spice? It's okay. <laughs> I like apple better. Apple spice. Isn't it apple, apple spice? Apple cinnamon. Apple cinnamon. Apple flavored things. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I just like cutting things. All right. Well, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you want more just like this one, um, be sure to leave a comment down below. <laughs> Rachel's saying no. You guys might say go. I don't know. Maybe yeah. in another three years. Maybe in another three years. Maybe at a million. Maybe. million subscribers. We're at 350 somewhat subscribers, 350,000 subscribers, which is pretty cool. Um, we're getting there. In just three years. Three years, so like a hundred thousand in uh, roughly a year. Three, uh, one thirty-three a year, which is pretty good. It's a decent clip. Maybe we need more Rachel. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why. <laughs> Maybe there's not enough Rachel. There's not enough Rachel in this channel. I don't know. We'll there's see. There's plenty of. There's them. plenty of Rachel. But... Yeah. All right. Well, I uh, hope you guys enjoy this one and uh, join me on the next one. Bye, guys.